Hey everyone, welcome back to Safe Fitness Training. I'm JG. I've been a fitness trainer for 15 years, but I have been working with the Body by Science Method for five full years, and we're talking about high intensity training here. Today, I wanna to talk a little bit about nutrition. And there's a lot of myths about nutrition. There's a lot of myths about uh, aerobics. There's a lot of myths about fitness. And there's uh, not a whole lot of knowledge out there for strength training from a scientific perspective. So I want to talk about those things today because I think it's important for you to know how you're going to get the most benefit out of your diet and nutrition. A lot of people, they start into a diet and they, they're doing really well. They, they've, they've really gotten into it. They've taken out a lot of foods and they're eating just whole foods. Lose like 10 pounds, 15 pounds. The problem that I continue to see people having is that what they're doing is they're not actually changing anything except for their diet, their nutrition. They may do a little bit of what people call cardio, which is basically aerobic activity. And sure, hey, you're going to burn a few calories while you're doing it. But then your, your baseline goes right back down to where it was before. Um, what we're talking about the missing element being is, you, you guessed it, strength training. Um, putting muscle on our bodies makes us biologically younger. And I, I truly mean that. Um, before I go any further, hey, look, like, uh, subscribe. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Or hey, if you're on my page, uh, share this page with somebody. Uh, share this video. I'd love uh, to spread this as far as I can because as far as it's going, high intensity training really is gaining a lot of popularity, especially since the science of strength training has really been um, spread a lot further than it used to be. You know, say in the, the 80s when everybody was just doing aerobics and that was the thing, right? Well, none of those people really had any muscle on their bodies. They had to keep doing that for an hour, an hour and a half every day in order to just kind of maintain where they were at. Um, so I'm going to get into some more of those myths a little bit later. I'm actually going to make a whole video on it, but this is mostly about nutrition and strength training. And um, it, you can kind of look at it like this. Our bodies are fat burning machines. You know, when, when we're around 22, 23 years old, we're working at our maximum efficiency, right? We turn to age 25 or 26 and we start losing muscle mass. We'll, we'll lose about a half a pound of muscle every year of our lives unless we're doing strength training. And I'm not talking about anything other than building muscle, right? You're not gonna do that with aerobics. You're not gonna do that with what people call cardio. It's just not gonna happen. In fact, cardio can actually burn muscle and get rid of muscle, and you can actually lose bone density doing so. So again, I'm not saying, hey, don't do cardio, it's evil, and of course not. And what I'm really saying is, is that strength training is the most powerful key to make you biologically younger but also to take your metabolism and, I mean, literally raise it back to the roof, back to when you were 25 years old. How does that work? For every one pound of muscle that we add to our bodies, we burn an extra 37 and a half calories just sitting still at a resting pace, uh, doing nothing. Quite literally, I could be sitting in this chair at a zero intensity and I would be burning more when I add that muscle to my body. And I've, I've clearly noticed it because I really don't do that kind of aerobic activity I used to do all the time. And, I, you know, I've sustained my, my same weight that I've had. I, I gain a little and lose a little here. But, you know, when it comes down to it, it really is about nutrition at that point. I basically added about 9 to 10 pounds of muscle to my body from about six years ago. Um, and in turn, that's raised my metabolism to burn an extra 375 calories every day, sitting still, doing nothing. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Um, if you're 55 uh, years old, you've never done strength training, you're burning 500 calories less than you did when you were 25. A lot of people say, yeah, hey, my metabolism slowed down over time. Yes, that is absolutely true. What's actually happened is um, you've lost muscle mass. Uh, you know, sarcopenia literally means uh, muscle deficiency, sarco meaning muscle, penium being loss or deficiency. And so, like I said, if we were to add that extra 15 pounds of muscle back, um, burning calories, our metabolism increases ex exponentially, I mean, in a huge way. And, and that's powerful, right? That in itself is enough to really make us want to do this because 
Truly, and I'm really meaning this, you only need to do strength training once or twice a week. This is not something you need to do every day because we really do. When we get to full muscle fatigue, and, and if you're asking, hey, what is full muscle fatigue? How do I reach that point? I'm going to drop a video below so you can look at that and kind of hear my perspective on how to reach that point, what it can do for you. You need about two days of rest in between those sessions of strength training where you get your muscles to that full muscle fatigue. Um, you know, strength training does a lot of other powerful things that good nutrition and diet just simply can't do. And I know I've mentioned this on other videos, but it's this incredibly powerful protein in our bodies that's created when we get to full muscle fatigue. They're called myokines, of course, like I mentioned before, and um, there's at least a hundred of them. Uh, we only know what a portion of them do at this point, but they are amazing. They do incredible things like build bone density. Um, my, my mom has uh, reversed her osteoporosis all the way to osteopenia, including multiple clients that I have. Um, we have we have clients who have stepped down maybe five sizes. Um, incredible stuff by raising their, their resting metabolism, often without changing nutrition. It's, it is powerful to do so if you really are in need of changing your diet, but it's not always necessary when you step into a strength training routine. These myokines also are responsible for lowering blood pressure, lowering cholesterol. Um, we're talking about destroying cancer cells, or at least creating that self-destruction cycle, beginning it, which is apoptosis in those cancer cells. I mean, this is powerful stuff. Um, strength training changes your brain chemistry. It protects your body. It protects your organs from um, deteriorating. I, I made another video where I talked about the power of using strength training to basically save your life in an emergency situation. I'll drop those videos down below. I'll probably leave uh, a couple more and, uh, you know, a link to my website as well where you can see, you know, what I write about and talk about there. Um, and when it comes to down to cardio, and this, I'm kind of going to end it here in a sense because, you know, this video is mostly about nutrition and pertaining to strength training. But in a sense, it's about cardio too, because there's this myth that, hey, look, if you spend an hour a day on this treadmill, you're going to lose all this fat. And that's just not true. Uh, same thing in the book Body by Science. There's this one particular uh, couple pages, and I, I print these out for clients and give them to them as well. But basically, you know, Dr. Doug McGuff, the emergency room doctor, he, uh, he did the math. And, you know, you'd have to maintain 60 minutes of car cardio, what people call cardio, aerobics. You'd have to maintain that for an hour a day for 15 days to even burn one pound of fat off of your body. That's a pretty, that's a pretty intense amount. Um, I know I don't have time for that. But what we're talking about is changing that in, you know, just kind of stepping away a little bit and saying, hey, I'm going to do some aerobic activity sometimes, but... I'm going to strengthen my muscles because that raises my metabolism all the time. Not only that, but it's going to it's going to change my life in the sense that my organs are actually go if I double my strength, my organs are actually going to work at twice the capacity. They're going to have they're going to be half as taxed as they used to because that goes neck and neck and exactly with um, the building of muscle. So again, it's really powerful. Um, yeah. And, and I just want to say this about cardio as well, and I know, I know I've gotten out on a kick here when it's not really about cardio, this is really about nutrition, but, you know, when it comes down to it, I think it's kind of crazy that society has begun calling aerobic activity cardio because, you know, again, the same book, Body by Science, where we're talking about cardiovascular activity, strength training actually helps build both halves of the cardiovascular system, the cytosol and the mitochondrial. And aerobic activity, what people call cardio, it actually only builds one half of that system. So when you look at what cardio should be, people should be calling strength training cardio. Uh, and I know that's not a popular idea. Um, uh, this, this book is actually life-changing for anybody who really wants to step into a total body fitness program. You'll spend probably about five hours less every week in exercise. If this is something you do seven days a week, you only really need two strength training sessions, but watching nutrition is immensely helpful to do so. 
uh, like I said, what I what I think is the most powerful thing for me uh, when it comes to nutrition is to keep a balanced nutrition plan, right? And I kind of what I mean by that is when I tend to take out carbs completely from my diet, I get these cravings and I just, uh, I want them so bad that I usually fall back on bad, bad habits. It's like, well, at that point, I'm just eating a bag of Cheetos, you know? That is absolutely not what we want. You know, we want to eat whole foods. And so even Dr. Doug McGuff was asked about this, you know, hey, um, what do you do for nutrition? You know, what do you find is the most helpful thing? And he said, a balanced diet. If you want to do low carb, do low carb. If you cut out everything completely, you're going to have those cravings. And he said, you know, uh, he, and it was funny. He actually mentioned eating tons of nuts and eating tons of tons of cheese is where he gains a ton of weight. And I thought that was really interesting. You know, he was saying that that cheese is dairy. It's turned into sugar in the system. Well, there's so much dairy sugar basically in that. That's not something that we would think is true, but it absolutely is true. And if our bodies are craving carbohydrates, sometimes if we're trying to cut out those carbs, we'll go to cheese and we'll just be eating a bunch of sugar when it comes down to it. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, I know that I, I lost four pounds in you know a week and it was literally just from cutting out nuts and cheese and that may sound crazy. Uh, I'm going to make a whole lot of more videos. Of course, um, I kind of ranted and uh, rambled a little bit in this one. But I'm going to come back and make more videos on the myths of cardio, the myths of fitness, how powerful strength training is, and about nutrition. And I hope you will join me on those videos. Uh, check out my website. I'm going to leave links below, and I will see you on the next video. Have a great day.